Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kepsec here, bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Sunday. And today I want to go over some uh, basic networking stuff. Um, the reason why I'm going over networking stuff is because a lot of people that I work with, they're struggling with networking fundamentals. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, you know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. So I hope this helps you out. It's for someone that's brand new to networking. That's that they're not... Um, I guess they're not good with networking skills, right? So I'm going to go over a presentation today. I'm going to talk about networking. Talk about networking, networking as in TCP IP and why do we need it? Why we why we use it and how it's used in a job environment or how it's used in a, I guess, in a home environment. All right. So let me share my screen with you real quick. Give me a second. Yeah. So it's called, today is called a networking of things. I want to go over some networking concepts with you today. And I'm going to make a couple of videos on networking because a lot of people are struggling with networking fundamentals. And you need to know networking when it comes to working in a job environment or when it comes to just being in IT, if that makes sense. So networking of things, uh, domain name system. So what is DNS? DNS is a domain name system. It is the phone book of the internet. Each device connected to the internet has its own unique IP address, which other machines can use to find the device. DNS server limits the need for humans to memorize IP addresses. So... A lot of people get confused with this and some other stuff. So a DNS is domain name system. Think of it as Google.com, Facebook.com, YouTube.com. It's all websites, DNS server. That's, that's what it is, basically. And it gives you an IP. So when we talk about DNS, you people ask me, like, what does that mean? Or why is it important? It's important because it gives you a unique identifier. It gives you an IP address. So when we go to the start menu here, for example, if you go here and you type CMD, and you type IP config right on your computer. Um, uh, if I could type if I could type today, right? I can't type today. Um, you get a unique IP address. So I have an IP address of 192.168.156.1, right? So people ask, where the hell did that IP address come from? That came from my service provider, my ISP or my internet provider, which is files Verizon, right? A lot of people get confused with this. So each individual company, each individual home or wherever you are you're at they get a unique IP address. Because a long time ago, um, IP addressing was very complicated. So imagine uh, imagine an IP address being translated from letters into numbers. Imagine it being a bunch of letters like like sam.com, blah, 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 blah. Like, like basically IP addresses or IP addresses in, in the nutshell, it translates letters into numbers. So you're translating a bunch of letters into numbers. And, it, and basically we the way we did networking or the way they set up networking is that it makes it a lot easier for everyone to just use a bunch of numbers as opposed to putting a full a full domain name or fully qualified name like google.com or whatever. So instead, you have an actual IP address or you have a number that you could put. So hopefully that makes sense, okay? So what is an IP address? So an IP address is a network address for your computer so the internet knows where to send your emails, your data, and pictures of cats. When we think of IP address or when we think of IP, we think of Ip Man, you know, Ip Man, the, the karate fighter, you know, the, the movie Ip Man. I love Ip Man. It's totally not about computers or networking. Totally not about computers or networking. Very disappointing. Just some Chinese guy hitting people. That's basically what I think of. When I think about IP, I think about Ip Man, the, the uh, fighter, but it's not actually Ip Man. It's actually internet or your internet protocol address. So basically, it actually gives you an, an IP address. So what is the ACP? So the ACP is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So it actually allows you to obtain or require a TCP IP configuration information from your DHCP server. So actually a server, so if you ever set up a server on a virtual box environment or a VMware or any of these other things, basically if you go into your settings or you go into your server and you set up your domain controller, you can actually set up the ACP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So what, that, what the hell does that mean? So that means you're actually setting up a, a server and you're setting up an IP schema. You're setting up IP addresses so you could actually give a unique number to each individual client or each individual computer that connects to it. So sometimes you have this thing called lease time. You have this thing called reservation and you have this thing called scope. So when we think about scope, don't think about scope as a mouthwash. People think of it like, oh, scope, the mouthwash. No, so scope is basically a set of numbers from A to Z of how many IP addresses you could give out to a certain amount of devices. And then basically you have this thing called lease time. So lease time is like when you go buy a car and you purchase a car and, it, and you only have that car for a certain amount of days. So that's the same thing with IP addresses. So basically you're leasing out an IP address 
And there's also, there's also a certain amount of days, depending on how it's set up in a network, in a network topology or in a network or in a network in, a, in an environment, it's only good for a certain amount of days before that IP address changes. So what you have, what you what happens is, is when you go to a job environment, these IP addresses tend to change over time because you have a network team or you're the, you're the sysadmin and you're setting it up, and the network the network was was probably one nine two one six eight dot one dot one, and then all of a sudden is one nine two that's that one six eight dot one that one that two, and it changes the IP addresses. So the IP addresses keep changing over and over again because you have a lease time. It's not a reservation. It's not a reserve IP address. So when we take when we talk about reservations, we talk about uh, somebody reserving a hotel, right? So you're actually going into a hotel and you're reserving it. So that means that you're basically going in there and it's reserved for you for three days. The reservation in, in, a, in an IT land basically means you're reserving that IP address so that IP address is good for a certain amount of time and you know, it doesn't change over time. So the ACP in a, in a nutshell basically is a network protocol used to configure IP networks. The ACP server, uh, it listens to UDP port 67, dynamically assigns an IP address and other networking per perimeters to DCP clients. So that's basically what networking is in a nutshell. So you have reservation, you have lease time, um, you have a scope. Basically a scope is a set of IP addresses that you, you set out on your... DHCP server from uh 100 IP addresses to 200 IP addresses and basically it it, it does it does sometimes uh we run do do run out of IP addresses so sometimes you have to go in there and you have to um, add more IP addresses and that's that's where you get an issue where a user or a client cannot connect to their device and you're like oh what the hell's going on today I can't this this user's not getting an IP address they're getting a an IP of 169 which is a uh, a PIFA or a private IP address, and they're not getting an actual IP address. What the hell is going on right now? So that is because um, the DHCP server does not have any more IP addresses, or it could be because of something else. So hopefully that makes sense. So people are asking me like, Kevin, what the hell is a static IP? What's a dynamic IP address? So when a device is assigned to a static a static address, the, the, the address does not change over time. It, it's static means that it stays like that. It doesn't go anywhere. It's the same number forever. Dynamic means that the network is always changing. The IP is always changing. So a perfect example of this would be if you go and you assign an IP address to a printer. So a lot of people that are in the DOE, Department of Education, when I worked for the DOE, we would actually assign a static IP. And that IP would not change over time because we would physically change the settings on the printer so, it, so that instead of doing, doing dynamic, it does static. Instead of doing DHCP, dynamic host configuration, which grabs an IP from the server or from whatever you're setting it up, we change that to static so that it doesn't change over time. And then people could print, their, print on their printer as much as they want because that IP never changes. So hopefully that makes sense. So what is a default gateway? Like, Kev, what is that? Default gateway is mostly used for web page access. It requests is sent through the gateway before it actually gets on the internet. A default gateway are essentially routing systems that allow requests to find the quickest way to find their attended destination. Even if the senders and receivers are using different network protocols, it doesn't matter. So IP config will give you this information. So if you go to the command line, like what I just did earlier before, you type IP config, it will give you the default gateway. So that's basically what a default gateway is in a nutshell. And then people say, like, what is a subnet mask? And now we have this whole pandemic thing. You know, they, they have these all these you have all these memes and jokes, so I gotta throw some memes in there because I want people to memorize what I'm teaching them. So I present to you the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, right? So a subnet mask defines the range of IP addresses that can be used within a network or a subnet. It also separates an IP address into two parts, the networking bits and the host bits. For example, a common subnet mask for a simple home network is 255.255.255.0. So this subnet mask allows you to use up to 254 usable IP addresses within the home network. In other words, up to 254 computers, phones, and other internet connected devices can connect to the router, the network, and access the internet. So hopefully that makes sense. There is a um, this thing called class A, class B, class C. So when you think about um, IP addresses in a nutshell, you think about the classes, you think about uh, 255, 255, uh, 255.255.255.0, think about 255.0.0.0, 255.255.0.0, so different classes, class A, class B, class C, which I'm going to go over in, in a all more overview with the seven layers later on in one of my other videos, so don't worry about that, because I'm doing over, I'm going to go over networking stuff with you guys, okay? 
So then people ask me like, Kev, what the hell is a MAC address? So a MAC address is a media access control. And it's a physical hardware address. So that's basically a unique identifier to the network card itself. So a lot of a lot of these um, computers that we have, like my computer right over here, I, it has a physical address. It has a physical NIC card or network internet card, basically. So the NIC, when you think about a NIC card, think about a network interface card. So basically it's a physical card and if you flip it over or if you open your computer or you look at the NIC card, it actually gives you the, the unique address on it. There's actually a Mac ID on it. That does not change. That always stays the same. That is your hardware identifier. That IP does not change whatsoever. So that's basically what this is. And you will find this on a Wi-Fi card, on a laptop, on the hardware, on your mobile devices. If there's a net network uh, card in there, you'll find this on your PCs, your laptops, your tablets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully that makes sense. And then that's it. That's pretty much it for me. I'm going to stop sharing. So that's pretty much it for me. Uh, just a little bit of networking, just to get you give you a rough idea of how networking works in a nutshell. I hope this helps you out. With that being said, if you want to see more videos like this where I, where I go in depth or where I make it into a simple form of IT, please let me know. With that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and take care. Peace. Bye.